Hey everybody, this is Day Trader Rockstar. It's a Friday and um, starting a little research here. Market has just opened up. We've been chomping around. We just had a tradeometer set up and I've been taking a position here and I just uh, want to start this off because I'm along here 63 and uh, three quarters and we're right underneath that. But I like this area a lot. I think we're going to actually push up here and uh, get back up to around that 2166 level. Put a stop right underneath the recent lows here. So you know, we're going to see how this plays out, either to the upside or to the downside. The um, the one main thing I pay attention to, of course, is that five-minute rotation. We started rotating um, down, and we got oversold. So we have that going for us. We had that little trade alert, a uh, tradeometer set up also. And, uh, but the big thing is the 60-minute time frame. Six minutes kind of against us. But, again, I'm looking at the five-minute time frame right now and the rotation on the one-minute also kind of a double bottom divergence here so you know, double bottom you can see the higher low on the stochastics and you know we're just uh, right here so let's get this thing going right now and here we go High tick alert. Maybe a little high tick alert. And you can see here, um, nice little bounce. Normally, uh, you know, you take your indic you take your um, your entry on your high HPS uh, method, you know, either to be that divergence or a tradeometer or that, you know, that setup here. In this case, we had that double bottom divergence and a tradeometer setup. So you got a nice little pop. You have you have a profit here. We still haven't rotated up to that 80 level. And that's usually my uh, exit scenario if I wanted to take that off. Probably against the 200. I mean, we could lock in two ticks here and uh, wait for a better setup. It is a Friday, and it's been back and forth, as you can see. I've t I rode this all chop, this chop here, and we are working our way out. I mean, I think we are going to get up to this 2166, probably a little bit higher. If we get to 2166, we're probably going higher. But um, you know, it's all about uh, what you take off the table. And when you have a green on the screen, and now you don't. Now you do. Now, you know, during this video, I was actually going to show you the tradeometer in action today, meaning that uh, when we have a tradeometer set up, we're going to throw it in there with a three-tick um, target. You know, possibly more, depending on the uh, the time frame. But I want to show you the reactions. Last night, I was watching the tradeometer. Uh, last night, it was actually giving some great levels, even in a flat market. And the night before, the day before, and it's been really good. So, concentrating a little bit more. This is a signal right here and now I bought one minute sell signal now we just had a ram bot sell signal which is a little bit different we're going to hold on to this we're going to look for a little further pop hopefully get out of here a little bit higher
And again, you can see how the things are just kind of grinding here. It doesn't make for an exciting video. I should be starting my research now. Um, a little further move here. Maybe I'll move it down to uh, 65. I think I'm going to move this down to 65. Take that off at 65. I think we'll get that. And I'm going to add a add a car here. So I added a car here. Pretty much uh, my cost average 64 exactly where we are right now. I see uh, Ubi in the room here saying, looking at uh, CISC. Here we go. Come on, pop this. Pop it. There's all this work just to get a point. All right, now we're kind of uh, flatlining here on the one minute. Let's see if we get a little further. Oh, come on, because I don't want to just give uh, get uh, give uh, give away a couple of these uh, ticks here. We're right up against the 200 again. Looking for a little further extension. Oh man.
IBM here I'm dropping a little. IBM dropping. Uh, the Panera Bread looking pretty good. Again, this is one of my favorites going into today. I think it's my best bet I, I mentioned in the room earlier today. So we'll take a look at that chart. We'll call this a uh, part of the research. It's a market there drop back down here. PNRA. Um, just love the pullback. Um, we're oversold. You know, 200 period moving average. I like to get a retracement like we did back down here. We kind of break down from the 200 and push back up. Here's our, you know, pretty decent breakdown. I love this setup for a break back up here. So that brings us well, well over $200. Um, we're right up against 199 And, um, you know, that's uh, why this one is one of the best bets. So, uh, we got into CMG today. It's 414. That was our first trade of the day. We got in at 410. We have a target of 425 on that. But, you know, getting five, six, seven points on it in one day, you might just want to take that off. Uh, but that's uh, currently on the board. PSA also looking pretty good, but we're going to go into more detail on stocks in a bit. YM Tradeometer oversold. Can't see anything happening here. Very choppy um, session on a Friday here. Bria, um, the lows on Alexion, Alexion Pharmaceuticals dropping to the lows. PSA making a nice rotation back up off of 218, back up to 220. And a market here, just wow. Talk about the uh, just the chop. You could probably get a couple ticks out of each one of these shots, but we only had one alert here. And this was a nice one. A nice uh, little alert right here. And, uh, you know, we're looking for this to rotate up. Now, you actually got this rotation, and we talk about when we get that that fast rotation, um, you know, we tend to get a little pullback. The bigger picture might be still pointing higher, but that tight, tight, uh, you know, little rotation here kind of gives you a little clue on when to take some short-term profits versus holding it on. Now, in this case, I'm continuing to hold on here. NQ Tradeometer oversold. All right, so we got the first NQ Tradeometer oversold level. Oh, they, well, the NQ actually is showing relative weakness here. NQ just pulled back here, making lewd lows. I want to show you that um, if I can. Um, let me move this all the way over here. Take a look at the NQ there. We kind of had a nice signal. We popped up and pulled back. We just got oversold. You can see this NQ's, the NQ, the NASDAQ actually hitting lows of the session first, kind of leading us lower. Market still kind of stalled out here, not much going on.
Now you can see what's happening here. And again, 16 minutes into this trade, not much going on. Um, but you are starting to see some of what we talk about relative strength. We got certain stocks moving higher. Our CMG, which we got into earlier today at 410, is at 415, 416 now. Again, you have to make a decision at one point if you want to take profits and let it run. The Panera, though, is one of my favorites here. And as you can see, good consolidation. Looks like it's going to try to break through the uh, 199 and hold above it. Um, Twitter is in the news. I have it up on the screen. IBM not really performing, but PSA here is starting to come back some, uh, which I, I, I kind of like, you know, because you know, I'm in that. And um, <clears throat> you have to take, take these little dips and swings. Uh, just remember, you, sometimes you might get a big candle, previous day candle, like in this in the example in the PSA. You had a decent candle yesterday, and you pulled all the way down into the candle, and then starting to move back. And it's just it's everything, you know, you can see how this daily is still maintaining an upward bias, still very strong. 60-minute time frame, well, we started pulling back on this uh, earlier this morning, but you can see the next 60 is coming back strong. Five minute here, it's starting to rotate back up. So it's, uh, you know, it's working its way back up here. And there's the S&P again here. Take a look at Philip Morris today also. Um, I've been following the Altria yesterday, MO, and uh, it's not a bad pullback on the daily. You know, we, on the daily we came down to this pivot area, we started bouncing, starting to rotate back up. But let's take a look at the Philip Morris too, FPM here. It's actually showing relative strength versus the other tobacco stocks. Um, a better chart holding the 200, holding, <clears throat> you know, pretty tight consolidation up here near the highs. Kind of gapped up, holding that gap. Actually showing strength today. CMG also rocking and rolling. And here we go once again. Well, I apologize for the length of this video. <laughs> um, I should stop and just start it again here. <laughs> but I already did some research on it here. Twitter um, news is out there. I'm not in it. I'm going to just take it off my screen right now because I'm not on the air. Uh, but watch this here. Should get that pop. Panera looking pretty good. Things I'm expecting this market to run back up to the highs. I almost want to. Oh, I did it. I caught it. I want to put it up a little bit higher. I think we have a shot of running here. We get a run here. Could have a really nice trade. But again, it's been choppy. You could have been trading this tra range here from 64 to 62, uh, 64.50 to 62 area, 62.50, back and forth. And I've done this multiple times.
All right, here we go. Finally. Hi, took alert. Finally. I'm just tired. I gotta, I gotta do some other thing. I can't be watching this all the time. But there we go. Your profit target has been reached. All right, starting this back up here, and we just had another tradeometer alert. So this is just the second one we had. I want to just jump in here real fast with the uh, order, you know. Um, and again, I'm not on top of it. I just noticed it. So we're gonna just jump in here fast with the order. We'll put a stop underneath the previous one. And um, let me show you what we're looking at here. You go over here, you can see that tradeometer. Our last one we took was here. We took it up to about here, and we got out, and it's chopped around, and we just got the alert right now. So that was on the ES. And a kind of a, a weaker day, so um, this is a very tight stop, very tight stop. Not giving us much of a, uh, a bounce area here to work with. Which is okay, I mean. YM tradeometer oversold. And we got a YM oversold level, so we have both an ES and a YM set up. All right, we're just letting it play out. Here we go. So we're watching that rotation. Remember, we'll watch that one-minute rotation. Let's just take a look at the, um, the S&P cash chart here also. And um, again, with that 60-minute rotation, and it's rotating fast, which is typically very bullish for us. That fast rotation on the 60, I'm loving that. Five minutes just got oversold, so it's looking pretty good. Um, we did push up against the 20, it's been holding us back here a little. 
always watch that 20 period moving average and i'll probably end up taking this off if we get to that 80 no matter even if, if one tick or three ticks or five ticks um you know we get that rotation up then uh you know there's a shot of uh, another pivot coming in YM Tradeometer oversold. <clears throat> Seen a couple of new lows American Express new lows, CAR new lows, and CRM Salesforce new lows, which has been weak all day. And again, we're very close to the lows of the session. We just tagged them. We got a negative tick right now, which is kind of negative. Our breath is negative. <clears throat> Couple more new lows on the session here. AIZ here, also lows of the session. And again, just to, just based off of the tradeometer, I should put that uh, I should put that in there. If you hear that buzzer go off here, that you know it uh, that we hit our target here. So we fix that. So that's 
There's another tradeometer right there. We had one there. One. PSI, PSA here pushing back up. That's one of our uh, good setups going into next week along with the Panera. We'll have to check the other ones. We're flat on that trade right now. Very tight stop. I think we're good here. I could actually probably move this up a little. But we're going to keep it on there, 63. Take it up a little. Maybe I'll take it off at 63 if we hit it. I'll make that call. A little bit more. Now remember, a winning trade is, you know, if it's one tick, two ticks, it's all money in the bank. As long as you have your uh, indicators in the right direction, things are looking pretty good. Uh, once you start to get extended here a little, then, you know, you have to make that consideration. You can take it off with a nice little profit. You know, I don't care if it's $20 or $50 or $100. It's like finding f free money on the floor. And... Uh, See if we get out at 63 here. See where we hit that 84 level? So the smart thing to do would probably end up taking this off. And um, I'm going to do that with a little profit here. Position closed. <clears throat> As you can see, right happened when we took it off with that 80, it came right back down. And... Uh, well, that was, uh, that's the moral of the story right there. You have to have a, you know, it's, it's easy enough to have our entry indicator announced when we have a good trade opportunity, but we also have to have our exit strategy. And for myself, you know, in this type of uh, trade, this very choppy trade, not much going on, it's very easy just to kind of look for that rotation. If you tag that 80, take it off, even if it's one, two ticks, three ticks, you never know. You could get five, you get a couple points on a nice rotation too. And if it's the five minute you want to hold on to it, you can do that. Just put a stop on the lows. This is still actively um, positive on the five minute, you know, time frame. But that's about it right now. Uh, so the next setup here, and again, not uh, you know, we'll wait for the next in indicator, next um, next trade opportunity. But it does appear to be a little bearish flag here forming. But um, I don't put too much into that right now because uh, we have that one minute. Um, when we have that five minute really starting to kind of grind back up the 60 minute again is uh is i think really important i don't want to take a look at the five minute on the, the futures here if we can look at that fast and the five minute just getting oversold so yeah i have a feeling we actually might move up here a little bit further a little bit more aggressive move here on the uh on this trade right now so I think, you know, this is the beginning of it. We could actually move up just like this moved up here in a longer term five minute uh, time frame. At this point, we had the five minute uh, perfectly set up. You know, if we look at that uh, five minute time frame around 1015, I'll, I'll check it out here. I could do it on the cash too, but at uh, around 1015, 10 o'clock. You can see that five minute here rotation was oversold and we started to rotate back up until we got overbought and it pulled back and we chopped around. So 
this looks really good for a five minute rotation back up like i said I, even though we did take our profit off of here just remember i'm trying to kind of push these through and uh, show you why you know some of these should be held some of them should be taken off but with the five minute on your side looks good to go now i'm not gonna get probably could get back in here with that five minute which i do like we'll make that decision later so i'm um, taking a look at the uh, setups right now so far we've taken two trades and we got uh, about 138 under our belt first one I added a, uh, two cars so we pulled out 125 and that second one we only grabbed 25 dollars netted 21 but that's like a 20 dollar bill when you get a a signal it's like a 20 imagine every time you got a tradeometer signal and you took a trade and you could get grabbed 20 dollars off of it <laughs> I do that every all the, I would do that all the time you know but wait for the setups and then take the setups and don't get greedy all right, so I just came back from lunch, and um, I'm picking this up here right after 1 o'clock. What time is it now? 1, 13.22, 1 1.22. And I see there was a, a nut, I missed one while I was out uh, that appeared right here on this little pullback. We had another um, tradeometer set up here, and looking at it, I, I would have said that didn't really play out too well. I mean, it did get a little initial bounce. We didn't get the full rotation up to the 80 line, so it would have been harder to get out if you if you're trying to take that take that to the 80 and you didn't get there. You might be holding on to it, and it might have rolled over on you. So this one is very sketchy, and um, you know, I would actually say that one did not work out. I'd say these two would have worked out fine. Uh, and then we just recently had another one, and um, just picking that up right now. Now. I'm right about there. If you take a look back at the tradeometer uh, charts there, I'll move over and give you a view of that. See right here. So we had that nice one back here, the first one, and then a nice another nice one. I'm not even counting the first one. Way back here. That was a nice move up. Nice move up. A little bounce move, and now we're going to start moving back up on this one. And, um, you know, the one thing I also want to tell, and I just posted this in the room, is that 60-minute time frame is set up now for next week. Uh, next week being early next week. Now we have the um, we have the um, debate on Monday, and uh, let's talk about it maybe affecting the market. So I'm going to try to do a special Monday night show for you. Uh, it will be a post-debate coverage of the markets and maybe even at the debate i'll actually be on during the de debate so maybe i'll be covering it also so if you want to hang out with day trading radio please uh <laughs> come on by monday i believe that is so i'm going to try to do that um i might actually do that in here because monday is usually my late day anyway um this is i don't want to waste your time i'm already up to 40 minutes on this video and this is way too long i apologize i'm going to split this up into a couple different ones um but anyway, that 60-minute time frame, the, the, how fast that rotated down from overbought to oversold, how fast that rotated really shows the strength in this market. Um, and now we pull back just slightly, just enough almost to fill that gap back here. On the, and this is on the hourly. Uh, there might be a, a gap on the daily there too. Yeah, so almost enough back here to fill that gap. I don't know if we actually did that or not. <clears throat> Not, not quite. So we maybe we another four, four or five points down here. We kind of close off that that gap, and then uh, you know it might be a nice technical level. We're already ready. You know I don't think we even get that. You know when we get that 60-minute rotation back that fast, maybe another couple candles down. Maybe we get down to that you know four points down. But we're getting very close. It might be here. Considering we just had an alert. Um, it might be when you know again this is at 1 30 and by the time you get this video it might be tonight it's not going to help you but it's good to see this stuff happen live let me pause this for a second all right i just want to jump back on here i just noticed here if we take a look at the s p here as i do my research i'm again putting together the uh the list of stocks that we're going to be uh 
focused on next week and uh, all the setups on those. So, but uh, just take a look at what happened. We just kind of rolled over a bit here. And um, we actually just triggered another Rambot. Now, we're pretty much at the lows of the session. I want to, you know, make sure we have a, uh, you know, an understandable reason to get in or get involved here um, on a Friday. You know, we might be seeing a little selling. You know, we always uh, always say Fridays are a little bit different. Well, anyway, here's today's uh, S&P chart. So we gap down. Went up, you know, here here we have the open. And we kind of just drifted all the way down here. Now, we're, now on the five-minute uh, time frame, it's... It's oversold, and what you're seeing is a little lower low. So I'm thinking that we're going to get a nice five-minute divergence here. I think this there is actually an opportunity here for a bigger move back up if this starts to turn back up above that 20 level. We'd have to see that, and I want to watch that one-minute chart here to kind of see if we get that bounce here because we did have that tradeometer set up. So a tradeometer set up, possible five-minute divergence setting up. It hasn't proven itself yet. We need to start turning up here. We'll start to see the momentum shift before. Um, you know, because the price is down here, we should see that momentum shift. Anyway, just to get back on uh, another topic here, and I'm just watching this, um, this level. I wanted to talk about that 60-minute rotation. That 60-minute rotation had come all the way back down now. This is a very fast rotation. Whenever we see a very a nice little move and then a fast rotation, and then th and the price doesn't really come back, um, too far, you know, just, you know, relative to where it's been moving. Um, keep your eye on this because this tends to turn right back up and it's a good sign. So we talked about maybe the possibility of kind of closing this little gap back here. And we're very close to that. So that might be what we might be uh, stretching for. And that would be maybe another 65, 60, maybe another two points, point to two points. And it might be uh, worth a shot there if we dropped off. But that five-minute divergence, as we just mentioned, probably set, starting to set up here. I want to take a look at the five-minute uh, ES here. You can't really see it on the on the ES, the E-mini, but you, I think you can see it better on the um, five-minute cash, which I tend to go by. Um, but let's just double-check here. Yeah, you can see how this is starting to flatten and hold, you know, really starting to hold above that 20 line. So we could either just take a shot on this thing. That is going to be one. And I already hear it ticking up. I'm not even looking. I'm going blind here. Where are we? You know, I'm going to take that a blind trade right there. <laughs> Keep the stop where it is. We're going to go that this is kind of a NQ tradeometer oversold. Right underneath. Hello. Yeah, but that way it's a very tight stop. Very tight stop. So right now we have a we have a tradeometer set up. You see that trigger over there on that tradeometer, that nice little green dot. We have it also on the NQ. And see if the YM is triggered here. And now this is where we are right here. And we're gonna see if we get this little move. Now we have the five minute. I want to take a look at the five minute one more time. And here's the five minute possible. Oh, it's starting to turn back down a little. It's always tough, you know. That's why yeah, I'm always trying to get the best position possible. So you sometimes anticipate it, but you really want to see that pivot area and that, you know, at least give yourself a, a, a definite point of reference. Like you know, when we're looking at where it's headed, but we're not seeing any point. And the point is really the turn in the. Uh, Here's a point of reference. Here's the pivot. There's a pivot. We never really saw the pivot yet. We need to see that pivot back up before we determine if it's real divergence. But, um, you know, <laughs> we do have the tradeometer on our side. Come on, just give us a little. 50 is a big number down below us, too. And there's, again, there's um, Apple getting whacked here. Apple is starting to roll over here a bit. PSA is held up pretty good. Hmm. Tough one. Tough, tough one. 
right at the lows. Trying to thread the needle. Uh oh, doesn't look good. Stayed in there. I didn't get taken out yet. Your stop has oh, been nice. hit. Bye. Oh, well, all right. Well, that broke down. And really, no rotation on that. So, um, there's a, there's a strike. Brings us uh, our net profit loss to uh, 84. Well, it's not bad. It was a real tight stop. Because I think it was worth the trade. The divergence actually might end up being right now with this reversal. It might have just, you know, lasered in on me and uh, took me out just to reverse. And I think we just had the, uh, yeah. Well, I just got an alert somewhere. I heard that Don. Let me see what it says here. Five minute, one minute time, five minute. Hmm. I have a feeling this is still going to be an interesting trade zone. And now about, um, it is about uh, 130, no, 150, excuse me. And we just dropped off here. And it looks like there's news out in Apple. Apple is getting hammered here. And it's dragging the market down with it. Look at Apple went from 114.50 down, uh, one, uh, dropped a buck and a half on tremendous volume. There was, a, there was rumors out last week about something with the their chip that wasn't compatible with Verizon, and I thought that was crazy news. But I have, you know, I have to put consider. Uh, excuse me. I have to uh, put these two events uh, together. I think Apple is weighing on the market. It has a, a heavy weighting in the S and P. Um, so, you know, what happens in Apple like this is going to definitely drag down the S&P. And that's, it goes and says, so a news of item like this is probably going to react back up after we figure out what's going on here, if it's anything. But we'll see. Um, we'll see what happens. I'll, I'll kind of um, hang here with you, even though you won't get this video until after the day. We'll kind of analyze, maybe find a trade and opportunity off it, but definitely looks like something out there. Some stocks here are holding up very strong, like the PSA here, which is going to be uh, definitely in focus um, for next week. It is, this is one of our holdings and looking great. Darden restaurants I'll be talking about in the next video. The next video, I'm going to actually break down the H HPS setups. I feel this video is way too long. It's so scattered with trading and, and random thoughts that I'll make a separate video just for the HPS. We'll make a fast video, maybe be 10 minutes long, and I'll... I'll list all the HPS setups and we'll go over it one, two, three. But I can tell you right now, you know, um, PSA will be on it. And Darden, you know, Darden looks like it's, it wants to go. I've been tracking this Darden and it's just been dead. Um, but it's, it's going to, it's going to go up. It's just a matter of finding that trigger to get in before. Now today it's actually ramping here and that's at the highs of the session. I want to bring that to your, you know, here's your 60 minute time frame. Just starting to turn back up. Looks like it has a lot of momentum behind it. And it's a very tight channel within a channel type of thing. A bigger channel here and a tighter channel. So we're going to break out of this channel here very soon. Um, here, here's the daily. And um, you can just see that the awful chop that's been going on here. One candle to the next candle. So you don't, can't, can't trust it. But uh, I do think that the bias is to the upside. So I think it, that actually has a shot of moving. It's nice, uh, nice candles t today. It doesn't mean much. Not a lot of volume behind it. I'll come right back when I hear what's uh, causing some of this uh, the drift here on Apple. Research firm, uh, data tracking it. firm called GFK, Apple, Apple, Alpha, Alpha, Papa, Lima. Negative uh, comments coming out of a firm. Uh, it's, hmm, it's amazing what they can do. I don't know what that is. I want to hear hear the rest of that.
I'm sure maybe their that company uh, leaked the news. Already have their already has the position in it, you know. Then leaks the news, and then uh, takes profits, and then uh, comes out and announces the news. But that's where we are right now. Um, watching what happens. So I'll be right back. Um, I'll just pause this right now and then I'll unpause it when I see something moving. Just coming back here because Apple here still continued to sell. And um, big sell off here in Apple. The market here trying to hold on. So I'm actually thinking of a uh, possible trade here setting up to see if a bounce on Apple will definitely push this market a little bit higher and see what Apple is going on now. I have some, I have nothing here um, crossing yet. Hmm. Starting to see maybe uh, 111.71. A lot of people in the room here talking about Apple also. And the Apple's not, you know, so all those phones are like, don't work. GFK iPhone data out, someone's guessing it's not good. Um, anything else here on Apple? Market here selling off fast. And, uh, we held up here. Oh, this is a tough one. Tough one. This is a gamble. It's a gamble because you can see there's a divergence there. We didn't cross over yet, but um, I'm holding off right now. We're starting to get a little bounce here in Apple. This is definitely an Apple reaction. But what's the news? Everyone's wondering what's the news? Big volume here, big volume to the downside. Whatever those out there might be uh, picking something up on CNBC, but I'm not hearing anything. Data from GFK on Apple Alpha Alpha Papa Lima iPhone 7 and 7 Plus launch weekend shows that units were down 25% on a year over year basis versus the release of the 6S and Plus Alpha Alpha Papa Lima shares. Big deal. Are down more than two bucks from the afternoon highs. All right, I want to take a shot on this. Uh, the bounce. But the news is out. GFK is a point of sales tracking marketing research firm. They are focused in Europe, so... I want to take a shot on it. Does not likely have U.S. data. Very tight Apple stop. Apple. I'll move this up. Sorry for the, the beepers, the buzzers. The data from GFK includes the following countries Britain, France, Japan, China, Finland, Australia, Portugal, Austria, Denmark, Belgium, Italy, and uh, about four other countries Alpha Alpha Papa Lima. Yeah. <clears throat> What is that data telling us? First week sales, week, uh, first weekend sales are down. Um, in Europe, I don't even know if they were. I didn't even know they were selling out in Europe yet. I know there's one on sale here. Um, my wife tried to get one and it was uh, sold out.
Come on, Apple. I'm just hoping for Apple to bounce. Because I know it's going to drag the market. Where Apple goes, the market goes. Come on, crickets. Thank you. All right, watch that rotation, too. Three minute buy oh, we have a three-minute buy signal. Three-minute divergence setting up. Looks pretty good. We have a one-minute divergence. Now we got a little pop. Is it Was it that easy? It couldn't have been that easy. A little pop up to the 20. With a divergence behind it. So a stop under 56 could be a, a good stop for a while. It's 2 o'clock. Take a look, a, a, another fast look here at the uh, SPX. I'm going to take a look at the three minute time frame too. Here's the five minute. Five minutes starting to rotate up. We got one five minute candle. And then we're going to have to see if we're going to get another one or begin a one in the three minute here. Right here is that low. And you can see we've really just been curved back up. Not, a, not an outstanding divergence, but a good enough one to. Uh, Probably get a couple ticks off of a trade here. You could close this out. Um, but, you know, if 20 period moving average, depending on how strong that trend is to the downside, you know, that's your also an indicator. That's why we put it on the screen. Sometimes you have trouble with the 20. You might use that as a point of reference. Take it off, take it on, you know, whatever helps. Need more crickets. I am the cricket whisperer. I want to probably take this off. I feel that we've got lucky on this bounce. And I know if I take it off, then it'll go another two peop two points for the people in the room. No, it's not moving here. Come on. All right, I'm just going to take it off here. Position closed. All right. Back up to 117.50. Still holding on to that 20 period moving average. You know, it does look fine on the five minute, three minute, but when I'm doing it live like this, or like tape, and I want to. Oh, there it is. There it is. There it is. And was that a uh, and that was a nice divergence there so this divergence here remember we put two different kind of circles in here this was our five minute uh, well actually three minute five minute divergence right here and that deserves a yellow a yellow we didn't have that ram bot but that was a news event definitely consider this a news and news trumps everything but when you have a divergence here awesome setup um, like a twenty dollar bill being found if you want it you want it to be twenty bucks take it Man, oh. so it's, it's ripping now. Couldn't have that patience. Um, and that five minute here looking pretty good. Darted restaurants at the highs of the session. So we're probably going to send this out. I'll get this out there. I want to try to continue to take these uh, uh, tradeometer trades and maybe I'll follow through on the HPS watch list. The, the watch list, we're going to concentrate on the stocks to go over them fast with you. So I want to separate the two videos. Even though you got a lot of information on here, be sure to watch the HPS watch list. Rambot, one minute cell signal. Um, 
more dedicated to the stock setups going into next week. All right, let me get this out to you before the end of the day. Maybe you gain something from it. I'm sorry it's over an hour long. Uh, hour long. Um, maybe you can watch it over the weekend, but you would be hearing this at the end of the video. <laughs> Have a good weekend.